We are hopeful too. Well, all right, guys. Well, we're really excited to hear your presentation. You can get started whenever you're ready. All right. So we're Oregon Tech. We're joined today by Quinn Demicio, Jared McBride, Peter Simonson, and myself, Tanner Karp, and I'm gonna kick things off. So obviously since entering the market in 2015 as a Bitcoin ATM operator, CoinSource has spent the last five years with a heavy focus on de developing an industry leading compliance department and proprietary software, which has allowed them to launch the new platform as a service model. CoinSource has a long-term goal to process 80% of the world's Bitcoin ATM transactions by 2024. And with this goal in mind, our presentation today is gonna to cover a quick industry analysis of what we learned in the research phase. We're gonna go over the end users, the B2B segments, and then we're gonna tie it all together as we walk you through our marketing plan step-by-step. Step. So first, the cryptocurrency industry is driven by economic growth, which prompts investors to look at different assets such as Bitcoin. The industry will continue to expand through the development of blockchain technology, which will allow for even faster, more secure transactions. And the industry will continue to grow as you, mainstream consumers become more aware of Bitcoin and as more businesses begin to accept it as a form of payment. One of the largest challenges the cryptocurrency industry has faced is the inaccurate perception of Bitcoin as a dark market, insecure currency when we know it to be the opposite. And with only 43% of American consumers being somewhat familiar with Bitcoin, one of the largest challenges has also been a lack of consumer awareness. As for Bitcoin ATM specifically, They've seen tremendous growth in the volume of machines installed worldwide with there being over 7,000 BTMs at the beginning of 2020. We used a three-year weighted average of year-over-year -year growth percentages to project that the number of BTMs installed worldwide should surpass 90,000 by 2024. We also found this amazing Google Analytics report which revealed some of the main interests of Bitcoin users with their top affinities being avid investors, technophiles, shutterbugs, and movie lovers. Now I'm gonna pass it off to Quinn to talk more about the BTM end users. We will now take a very quick look at the key consumers of CoinSource's product. The end users are tied to the B2B market and are critical to the success of the strategy. To build our B2B segments, we first researched the main consumers who are millennials, the underbanked, and baby boomers. End user personas and additional research can be found in our written report and we'd love to answer questions about them. With the end users in mind, four key B2B markets were analyzed that should be pursued by CoinSource. ATM operators have already been a significant market for the new platform as a service product. ATM operators have a network of ATMs with established locations. This market is adding BTMs next to the existing ATMs to provide those store owners with an additional source of revenue, which also is driving the ATM usage. Current, B2, uh, um, current BTM operators are also a potential market. They currently use costly third parties to manage a host of backend processing and compliance. And with CoinSource's variable menu of services, BTM operators will find a platform as a service products an attractive way to maintain their BTM brand while cutting backend operating costs. Another significant market is individual investors. Baby boomers are increasingly targeted by the fintech industry due to their financial well-being. Connecting with these investors will require an awareness and education campaign and positive experiences before significant investment will occur. The final B2B market is established corporations and new industries. Developing partnerships with large corporations like 7-Eleven and Walmart will establish coin source and BTMs into the mainstream and provide future opportunities as universal kiosks grow. Additionally, Moving into new industries like casinos, travel, or cannabis will expand coin sources footprint beyond convenience stores and gas station locations. Next, Peter will outline coin sources marketing strategy. Thank you, Quinn. So now that we know what coin source is offering and who they're reaching, we're going to go right into our marketing plan for the platform as a service. We have three objectives, each broken down into multiple strategies and tactics all tying back to the end goal of processing 80% of the world's Bitcoin ATM transactions. Now we're going to walk you through this plan step by step. Our first objective is for CoinSource to build a better awareness and reputation for Bitcoin, as well as showcasing their platform as a service as being a viable and profitable investment opportunity. Put simply, CoinSource needs to bring the perception of Bitcoin of the Bitcoin industry out of the dark and into the light. To do this, we've outlined two key strategies. The first is to reach the experts and influencers within the financial services and financial technology industries. 
We suggest CoinSource focus efforts on creating meaningful content and guest posting on major financial publications. Getting a highlight on one of these publications will provide a major boost in reputation and respect within these industries. On top of this, we also suggest that CoinSource develop quality case studies based off of client success to use at expos, conventions, and within their guest posts and content to really solidify the fact that their platform as a service really works and is profitable. Our second strategy is to reach financial advisors. Financial advisors serve as a source of influence over qualified potential investors in CoinSource's pop. To do this, we've outlined a three-step plan. First, to reach financial advisors, we suggest running ads and placing meaningful content in major publications that these advisors consume. Second, to educate and really build relationships with these advisors, we suggest going to financial planning expos and conventions to really educate and talk to these advisors about the profitability of Bitcoin and owning BTM networks. Lastly, to incentivize referrals, we suggest that CoinSource develop an incentive program within the current regulations to really encourage financial advisors to refer clients over to CoinSource when it best suits their clients' financial needs. These strategies will really help CoinSource break into this industry and become an industry leader within the financial services and financial technology industries, uh, placing them at the forefront of this Bitcoin niche, as well as expanding the niche in general and change consumers' current perception of Bitcoin and replace it with one of security, compliance, and profit. Now I'm gonna hand things off to Jared to discuss our next objective. All right, thank you, Peter. So due to the fast-paced environment within the Bitcoin industry, CoinSource must strengthen their current market, market segments of ATM operators, BTM operators, and investors to stay ahead of the curve. So tactics for successfully targeting ATM operators that add BTM networks include featuring CoinSource at the ATMIA conference, and various other conferences, ATM conferences across the country, become a supplier on ATMMarketplace.com, create a white paper featuring a successful ATM operator and or investor, develop an ROI calculator to show investment, investment potential and break-even timeline, and CoinSource should plan for the future by partnering with innovative ATM operators who are developing universal kiosks that can use CoinSource's platform as a service for processing. So tactics for targeting current BTM operators include, again, developing an ROI calculator to show current third-party costs compared to CoinSource's platform as a service, and promote CoinSource as a compliance leader in the industry that is ready for future regulation. Tactics for working with individual investors include promoting CoinSource through franchise associations, events, expos to generate leads, and increase exposure to interested and qualified investors interested in franchises. Lastly, our last tactic includes the use of GS mapping to target high opportunity counties across the United States. The blue sections on this GIS map represent counties with a high concentration of BETM users and investors. We would welcome any questions about the details behind this map after our presentation. So now I'll hand it off to Tanner to discuss our third objective. While continuing to strengthen the current segments that Jared has covered, objective three of our strategy aims to explore new segments in order to promote long-term growth. The first strategy under this objective is to explore new industries that we believe can naturally expand or better serve their customers with the use of Bitcoin ATMs. The first industry that we identified is the fast-growing cannabis industry. This industry hosts a range of businesses that have already been forced to operate unbanked or completely in cash due to difficulties working with banks. Many dispensaries are already accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment. The second new area of interest are airport currency exchanges. A company like Travelex, has, which has fiat currency exchanges in airports across the country, could naturally expand by offering customers the option to convert their cash to Bitcoin while traveling. Finally, we believe CoinSource could see growth by getting a foothold in the casino industry by leveraging their two-way kiosks to help casino goers convert their Bitcoin to cash to play games. The second strategy under this objective is to explore relationships with large corporate partnerships with companies that relate to the interests and needs of Bitcoin users. The first tactic under this strategy is to continue to target relationships with chain convenience stores such as 7-Eleven. While being cash-heavy locations, many of these chain convenience stores offer financial services such as check cashing and money orders, which draw the under and unbanked end users. The second tactic under this strategy is to target relationships with chain retailers that are already drawing the Bitcoin community to their stores. We believe Best Buy would be a well-suited partner because their main product offerings of electronics, cameras, and movies are in line with three of those top affinities of the Bitcoin community we mentioned earlier. 
Walmart, while also being one of the largest retailers to cater to these interests, additionally offers financial services, which again draws the under and unbanked end users. Now I'm going to pass it back to Quinn to wrap things up. Currently, CoinSource has about 10% of the niche BTN market. The multi-pronged aggressive strategy we developed will help keep CoinSource on track with a goal of processing 80% of the projected 90,000 BTMs by 2024. As data on each tactic is analyzed, strategies and KPIs will need to be adjusted to meet this rapidly evolving industry. Thank you for your interest and attention, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation. Yeah, I'll clap for that one. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Appreciate it. Fantastic presentation, y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So which one of you guys has a UI design background? Because some of those slides were just... <laughs> uh, it's all I've, it's all I've been learning graphic design a little bit. Just um, glad they trusted me to make some just, slides. Just, just put in your, in your in <laughs> yeah. or what? Yeah, just in my spare time. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's not only impressive; it's it's uh, also highly marketable. Let me let me tell you. So, <laughs> good job right there. Um, yeah, no, y'all. Uh, definitely, as a whole, as a team, I think you guys did an outstanding job uh, reading your memo and uh, and the appendix was 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 awesome. Seeing the presentation, I think just just you know. Uh, really knocked it out of the park. I think you guys really put it together very, very well. Um, I love the BTM focus. Um, obviously, the, your presentations, layout, and delivery uh, was, was, was top notch. Um, I love the market focus for, uh, uh, you know, and the marketing plan. Um, I love the, the, the uh, pitch as far as awareness and disruption. You know, we pride ourselves on being a, an industry disruptor. And so keeping that focus as how to move forward was just, uh, you really hit the nail on the head with that. A um, mm -hmm. couple questions. Um, the referral program, uh, uh, I love the idea. We've, we've bounced it around before, but I don't think anybody has, has given me the opportunity to ask a couple questions back. So uh, I'm going to take this time to, to ask you guys those questions, which is how to monetize that. Um, you know, what, 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 what's in it for uh, the uh, financial advisors um, to participate in a referral program, what are they expecting out of it in return? Are they expecting perhaps um, something from the end user? Um, kind of, you know, when you're when you're buying and trading uh, traditional stocks, and, and you know, there's a carry fee, um, or is it? Are they looking to collect something from coin sources, and because they referred someone to us, and how is there a way for them to have peace of mind that you know we did convert that lead into a customer? And, and so they have their checks and balances. Uh, so that, that would be one question I, I would love to know from you guys. Um, but uh, I guess we'll start there because I don't want to go down this, but all the other things I think are, are fantastic, including that. I'm just curious if you guys thought about that, um, that aspect of the referral program. Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So it's something I, I did most of the research on the referral program and my imagination of it, and I can draw it out and send you an idea of it, is that it would be CoinSource giving the advisor a kickback for referring the their client over to CoinSource as an investment opportunity. So there's the incentive for the advisor to do it, and that's where really the um, both education and relationship building piece is, is because we want the – you guys have your track history of being very compliance and um, just – really transparent about everything. And so to solidify that, building these strong relationships so that these advisors truly want to refer clients over to you when it suits their client's best interest, um, then their clients get rewarded, they have a good investment, and uh, the advisor would be rewarded through a portion of the end uh, profit you gain from that client, if that makes great. sense. Yeah, no, 100%, great answer, great answer. So Guys, on that, with, with the uh, go ahead, Lee. Sorry. Just a quick question: Would the would the CFP obviously we didn't need to disclose that? Are there some regulatory issues with that? Have we looked into that? I've looked into it a little bit. I'd love to do more research on it. Um, but what I found is it has to be done in a way that suits the client's best interest. 
And again, that kind of goes back to really building that strong relationship off the bat so that you don't have advisors that are trying to just make a quick buck off of their clients. And that's where I would strongly suggest only working with advisors that have a good track history themselves so that you know and you can rest assured that you're not going to get bit by this program because you're encouraging advisors that have a strong track history of working in their client's best interest to refer their clients to you. And in the brokerage compliance space, there's a suitability requirements that are closely monitored by their in-house compliance control and the regulators. So we, we'd have that on our side in that model also, I think. Good point, Ron. Uh, any judges, uh, any additional judges have any questions? Mike, were you going to say something? Uh, I was, but it, it was somewhat along the lines of what Lee's question was. Uh, you know, the financial advisors that I know and have known over the years uh, are uh, truly restricted uh, via government regulations and what they can and can't do. For example, um, the one that I most recently spoke with, he has two phones, two smartphones, his personal one and another one he has to use exclusively for business because uh, he cannot talk about anything personal uh, on the business phone and vice versa. Um, so, you know, it seems strange to me, I understand it, but there are some restrictive uh, and constrictive government regulations against financial planners. So I was, you know, just wanting to hear a little bit more elaboration on uh, what you know about that, Peter, and you somewhat answered the question uh, to Lee's point. Yeah, I think I think uh, did a very a very good job uh, with that. Very detailed, clear sign of a, of a lot uh, extensive research and uh, and knowledge, um, and just you know overall just investment into this uh, into their presentation. So I'm I'm extremely I'm extremely impressed, guys. I mean, I really am. I'm uh, I, I couldn't be uh, I couldn't be more proud of it, of all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That that uh, targeted marketing section with the key consumer breakdown really clapped for words uh, particularly yeah. how you guys integrated that into the presentation again you know really solid thank you thank you yeah no i loved it i loved it and then uh, like i like like i started with um and I've got to give credit to where credit's due. So uh, my dad on this one, so I I, uh, I can't believe I'm starting to sound more and more like him as I get older. But uh, great job on, on, on all of you on, on not only just the presentation and the look of it, but uh, each and every single one of you on how you guys look as well presenting this. I, I, I am so sad that we couldn't have done this in person, but I, I am just blown away at how you guys were still able to execute it, how you all look, how professional you sound and just how well you've orchestrated this entire presentation. It's um, it's as good as in person. I'm just sad that I can't high five each and every one of you guys right now because you all did a really great job. Yeah, yeah. we really wish we were in Dallas, but we're so happy that we had the opportunity to pitch this to you guys for sure. Definitely. Well, I'll be oh, traveling um, when travel gets to be, you know, <laughs> safer. Uh, I'll be traveling uh, actually towards the, to the Portland area. So uh, I'll, I'll love to, to uh, uh, you know, take all, you know, talk, all you guys at dinner, if that's doable, uh, if and when traveling is, you know, going to be uh, uh, safe soon. But if not, anytime you guys are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, please feel free to stop by the CoinSource office. Uh, oh, we'd, yeah. love to, we'd love to take you guys out and uh, just show our appreciation. Really great work here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> awesome. Uh Hi, this is uh, Crystal Gibble, obviously, and my daughter, Nyla. I've been doing my best to not have her uh, bomb the, <laughs> the area anyway. But I just wanted to say that y'all make an amazing team. And the importance of having someone who has certain strength in the team. So I, too, was wondering when I saw y'all's memo, who did the advertising, like the layout of it? Because that was phenomenal. I mean, that was high quality and you said that you do that just as a hobby i mean imagine what you could do if you did that um full time but uh but anyway but that's just an example of uh having someone on your team who has a strength that you don't have it's very important to have a 
diversified team so that you can come together in jail like you did to just knock it out of the park. So, um, and I just wanted to say, hit, hit, wink, wink. He said he wants to take y'all to dinner. So take him up on that <laughs> offer. Okay. Congratulations, I, I, Crystal, that was awesome. That was awesome. That is that is something that you know that's understated. Like it's it's evident when we see these presentations and the work product that you guys put forth. When there's a strong collaborative team effort, and yeah. that just shines. Yeah. So well, well, get on you, Crystal, for calling that out. Thank you, caller five. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I think that means I think that means that I got approval from uh, our chief risk officer that it's okay to take y'all out as well. So, <laughs> but, uh, oh. approved. <laughs> yeah, quick, see how quick this works with teamwork, y'all. It's it's a great model. Guys, I. <laughs> I am so grateful um, to wrap up on, on such a powerful, well done presentation. Um, this actually is the eighth and final one for the day. Um, seriously, I, I have to echo what uh, you know the sentiments that you've gotten from the rest of the judges. But you know, design goes a long way. We actually have our um, director of marketing is is listening in and watching in, and you know, she texted us and was just like absolutely wowed with the quality of the materials. And you know, there is a lot of this virtual collaboration and virtual delivery comes down to your ability to you know communicate um, through visuals. And I think what you guys did is really exceptional. So I, I just wanted to applaud you again, congratulate you. Um, not every team got a, an invite out to dinner, and uh, hopefully we'll hopefully we'll see um, how this all pans out tomorrow when you know we re we release the uh, winning teams. But I just wanted to commend you once again for doing an incredible job. This is the team that uh, actually practiced and did an open case. Um, previously based on a prior competition that we put together so uh, i'm not and i'm not surprised that we got some some great results from them great boy, you did it so much. to crystal's point i just wanted to, to finish with um that not only do i agree 100 percent, i think you guys as a, as a team as a whole um uh work very well together it's very clear to see that so regardless of whatever happens with this competition, first of all, know that you guys knocked out of the park. Um, but I want to let you guys know that something to keep in the back of your mind is that uh, I think that you all have a, an amazing opportunity, no matter what, uh, together as a team. I think that you guys could, uh, could turn key, uh, which is the word we use very often now in CoinSource and our B2B model. I think you guys have a turn key uh, marketing and ad firm uh, capability and potential right out of the gate. I think that uh, I think it would be a, um, a disservice to y'all to think that your uh, you know bread and butter and focus is to be on employers. I think that you guys can actually go out there as the you know as an aggressive firm right out of the gate. I mean, I'm I'm really blown away. What you guys have done looks professional quality from firms that charge strong, heavy five figures to even have a, some kind of a presentation or a pitch like that. And uh, I just, I'm very, very commendable of all you guys. I think you guys as a, as a team are, uh, I, I think as, I think you guys are ready. I mean, so uh, it's up to you if you want to continue to graduate or not, but I think you're ready for the workforce. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. I, I, <laughs> that is that is some serious, uh, some seriously awesome feedback from you, Derek. Thank you. Um, all right, guys. Well, seriously, we are so proud of you. Um, all of the presentations will be uploaded so you can listen in on some of the other students, hopefully um, as soon as we can get them up on YouTube. But, you know, again, we're really proud of you. We look forward to giving you um, all the results tomorrow uh, when you uh, when we were able to meet um, for the final presentations. Uh, I'm sorry for the for the results webinar. But until then, Hopefully uh, you can you can walk away feeling pretty proud that you really wowed the judges and that you um, really came up with some amazing insights. So congratulations and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys.